Hey everybody, this is Strategy Wizard. This is my son, Nathan. Hello. And today we're going to do a review on Dragon's Gold. Dragon's Gold is a game that, honestly, I've been not that interested in trying or playing, mainly because of the art style. I love dragons, think they're awesome, and I really like this dragon even, but the art style on the characters, and they just, nah, I just couldn't, I just couldn't get into it. So honestly, I would not have bought it. But it just so happens that we watched a video on the Dice Tower's Top 10 Dragon Games. Why? Because I like dragons a lot, and I wanted to see what they recommended. Just so happens this was number one. That still wasn't enough for me. I, I would have passed up on it, but Nathan, whenever he saw it, he said, you know what, Daddy, I like it. So since he was really interested, he wanted to try it, I thought, okay, if it's number one, it must be pretty good. I've got to at least give it a chance. And he wants to try it, let's go ahead and do it. So we bought it, and the question is, did it meet his expectations? Did it meet my mediocre expectations or exceed them? Or was it a complete disappointment? Let's go ahead and go to the table, and we'll find out. Okay, so this is what Dragon's Gold looks like when it's set up. Of course, it's for three to six players. We only have two set up here, but it'll be enough to get the, an idea of how the game works. Now, you'll notice we have four dragons who are set up in the middle, and they have treasure tokens on them. The way you win is by getting the most points, which to get the most points, you have to get the most treasure. But it's not a one-to-one -one ratio of how the points work. There's differences, and there's two ways to play, basic and advanced rules, and the point allocation is different depending on which way you play. You get a handy reference sheet that shows you how the points work for, um, for advanced or otherwise, and which is very useful because you, know, you, it, you really need to, that help remembering how everything uh, gives you points. But essentially... The way to look at it is the translucent gems that you can kind of see through. Usually you're trying to get either sets of the colors or you're trying to get the most of that color. The solid silver and gold are worth straight points. Red is worth straight points, but red it has special effects depending on if you play a wizard card to, to claim that treasure. So what's going to happen is the players are going to go around and each turn, let's say I go first, I'm going to take one of my heroes. Now you have four different heroes to choose from, and it's always, everyone has the same four heroes. You've got um, a wizard with attack power one, a thief with attack power two, a female knight with attack power three, and a male knight with attack power four. What's going to happen is, I'm going to choose any one of these dragons. Let's say I want to go after this one. I put my four there. Well, this dragon has eight health. Now, you'll just to get a closer look, each dragon has three numbers that are important. The bottom left number shows you how much treasure will be revealed as soon as, as soon as the dragon's turned over. And the bottom right shows you how much treasure is hidden that you'll find out after you defeat the dragon. That treasure will be revealed. It's hidden treasure. And then this is their health. So in this particular case, this dragon has eight health. There's four revealed treasures and there's four that are hidden. So once we beat that dragon, four more treasures will be revealed. We don't know exactly what we're going to be getting, but that causes a good bit of uh, ex excitement because sometimes you want to go after the ones that don't have anything revealed just because you're you, maybe you don't want a lot of what's revealed here and you're hoping something good turns up after you beat someone with a lot of hidden treasure. So, now let's say Nathan wants to play next, let's say it's his turn, and he'll play, he could play the four right now, and we would be able to beat this dragon, because we'd have a total of eight. Or, he could say, you know, I'm going to play the wizard, because his special ability has to do with the red gems, maybe he wants to do that. But if he does that, then the third player will have a chance to play, and let's say they say, oh, I'm going to go ahead and participate and beat this dragon. If that happens, all these gems are going to come out, we're going to pull, get from the bag, and we're going to pull four other gems. And now we see exactly what's up for grabs. The thing is, you do not evenly split the treasure for, you know, three ways. You have to negotiate, and this is where the core of the game comes in. So immediately, this timer is going to be turned over, and the players who participated in the battle they have that much time to make a deal on how that gets split, and it has to be specific. You can't make it random, you can't flip coins, roll dice. You have to be exactly, I'm going to get this much, Nathan is going to get this much, and the th other player is going to get this much. And making that decision, being able to negotiate that to come up with a, with, with a decision on exactly how that's going to be split, that can be challenging because sometimes more than one person wants that red gem or someone really wants that gold because it's worth three points while the silver is only worth one. And trying to make a decision on that can be very 
exciting, but also it could be a little stressful depending on, you know, your personality. In this particular case, you know, let's say Nathan says, you know, I really want that gold and I really want that red because I got my wizard in there. We're playing by the advanced rules. I want to get a magic card because in the advanced rules, if you you have a chance to get these magic cards if a, if your wizard claims a red gem and these magic cards give you special abilities so he says I, I really want the red gem I want the gold and I might say well I want to get all the translucent gems because I'm trying to go for getting the most of each color and the third player says well I'll just take the silver but I really have to have something else because it feels like what y'all have is is you know too good well that's now times out everyone's like oh no we didn't get it so that's where that's really the heart of the game is those negotiations trying to either keep someone from getting what they what you think they really need or struggling to get what you really need because you'll notice you have these uh, these um, little uh, shields so you can hide your treasure no one really knows exactly what you have unless they have a really good memory and they've been paying a lot of attention so that there's a lot of suspense building up as you're trying to remember and trying to think does this person have the most of the green or the blue translucent gems do I need to try to go for them is there any chance I can actually have the most and so the negotiations get really tense the farther in the game you get because people really don't know what's at stake for sure and of course if the black gem pops up or the black diamond that's there's one of those and that can really make it intense because the black diamond it had the rules on that and the advanced rules especially if you get the black diamond you get a whole bunch of points but then you can't get any points with the translucent gems so it just there's it just really keeps things tense especially especially if it turns up from a hit from hidden treasure because suddenly someone's going to get it they might want it they might not want it if no one wants it then everyone may just throw it and and let all the gems just go to the trash because no one wants to get that black gem or black diamond so those would go out here now, once everyone's defeated a dragon, you move the dragon out of the way, you reveal the next dragon, and put the treasure that needs to be um, allocated, and then everyone gets their cards back, but they'll be face down, and they're not usable until, the only time you get to use them again is if all you have is face down cards, maybe, or let's say you have two cards out here, on my turn I only have two face down, I get to turn them up and start using them again. So you have to be careful how you allocate your resources, and be as efficient as possible. I mean, you might end up spending using your best people to try to get some, uh, let's say, um, let's go for this nine over here. Let's say I'm going for this nine, and let's say I put a four and I put my three, but then Nathan throws on his thief to get to the nine. Let's say Nathan doesn't want me to get the treasure. He, and we could end up struggling and fighting over this and not get, and I could end up getting nothing even though I allocated my best people towards it. So, that's a, one of the big ways that you know you can mess people up if you want. So if basically you can allocate your resources to hurt somebody, or you can allocate them to help yourself, but you never know what everyone else is going to do. So as it goes around, it's it can be it can make you nervous, especially the more players there are, because you don't know who's going to get in the mix. If people start throwing in their thieves to steal, then you might end up losing some gems that you really need. It's it just you just never know what to expect, but Basically, that's the gist of the game. Halfway through, you're going to get the market card to turn up. It's, you always put it in the middle of this deck. Whenever the market card turns up, you're able to trade. You don't show each other what you have, but you can talk about, you know, hey, I'll give you uh, two red gems if you'll give me uh, a trans one, tr one certain translucent gem. And you negotiate. You have a certain amount of time. Take that. And then if you don't trade that's fine if in but you can trade as much as you want and then you keep going until the gems you've taken all the gems out of the bag and then once you've beat all the dragons that have gems left then the game's over and you find out how many points you have and that's pretty much the game so let's go ahead and talk about what we think do we like it did it meet our expectations okay so now that we know how to play Let's see what we think. But before we go to our actual opinion, let me just say this. Component quality wise, I think the components are great. I like the dice bag. I like the finish on the cards. They're nice. But there's a few problems apart from the artwork, which like I already said, I'm not a big fan of. But two things. The screens. I like the fact that on the inside, 
of the screen, you get to see that. That's nice. But on the side that everyone else sees, all they see is your player color. I think it would have been nice to have some kind of graphics here. I think that would have helped and made it you know, more interesting. Not a deal breaker because they still they, they serve their purpose. It shows you which color you are, which is nice. And but but not having any graphics, I think, is a disappointment. Now the other thing is these these gems. There's the gold and the silver. In this lighting. You can kind of tell the difference, but fairly well, but not well enough if you're not in really good lighting. You have well, to be in good lighting. You have to be in really good lighting because we, whenever I played, both times, whenever I played with my wife and my son, and then I played with my parents and my son, we played, and almost every time that we thought a gold would come out, we'd have to get, pull the gems and look at them and just make sure. Now this, I just you just have to see this. They could have done better. On, on this card, it shows you silver and gold pieces there it's obvious which one's gold and which one's silver but why couldn't they have done made it more obvious with the gems themselves i have no idea that yellow one could have been gold they could have made it obviously gold like that but in this case they're, they're, in, in whenever your lighting's not great it's a little challenging and it's a little stressful now it apart is. from that Component quality is great. Those, those it takes more time. A few little nits, but yeah, it does waste some time when you're trying to figure out if what's actually there. But apart from that, the component quality is fine. And if you have good lighting, it shouldn't be a big deal. And maybe I should just paint them. Maybe I should just get some gold paint and just paint the gold ones to make it obvious. But yeah, that's probably a good idea. Yeah, probably a good idea. But so, nonetheless, apart from the component quality, let's see if we like the game itself. Now, as we've talked about, the main mechanic here is the negotiation. There's card play, you're trying to or place your cards in places that you think they're useful. But you're doing that knowing that, let's say you put your four over here on this dragon, which means that you're really trying to go for it. Someone else might join with you and throw their thief on there to, to steal from you. So that's that's bad for you. But their thief helps you get closer to, you know, beating, beating the, the dragon. dragon. Yeah, beating the dragon and getting the treasure. So sometimes the, the timing of when you play makes a big difference. So sometimes you might want to play after everyone else has played and, and they haven't played a thief, play your four so you can beat it without anyone stealing from you. On the other hand, you might play your thief at the end to steal from people at the last second so that they don't they can't stop you. Go ahead. So it can be good if you play a thief and you're playing the wizard, it can be good and bad because it helps you get closer to the dragon, but then they can steal some gold from you. Exactly. Whenever other players start playing thieves on you, it's kind of scary because they can take some of your best things. You never know what they're going to get. Like especially, especially if they play a wizard with it, because if you play a wizard and a thief at the same time on the same dragon, they can steal from it, and, and you've played on that same dragon. And you'll get a wizard card. Yeah, they'll get a wizard card if they get a red gem, and they will be able to choose what they steal. They'll be able to look behind your, your shield and pick what they want, which means... It's scary. So right off the bat, so there's two, two ways. Two things they get. Yeah, they get. Yeah, exactly. Of course, you and can you negotiate get, to make sure they don't get the red gem. Wish you got it. <laughs> That's right. So here's the thing, though. Whenever you, the thieves are scary because let's if there's something that you know you want, you can start off playing the thief just to make people not want to follow you because they know if I follow me, it's a chance of stealing from me. So you can use the thief unless as a if, way to. Unless if you have a car to stop them. Are there cards that can stop that? Yes, there are. You're right. There is a card that can stop that, and we'll talk about that in a second. But that's the thing: is that the timing of the cards. You play the thief as a as a protective measure for yourself or a deterrent for other people. And do you play your wizard card as soon as you see some red gems, or do you try to play it at the very last second because everyone might start playing wizards and wanting to get those red gems? The card plays exciting. Then the negotiation is exciting because if you played a thief to steal from them, they might even use that as a way to say, hey, if you're going to steal from me, then I sure ain't gonna, I don't want to give you more gems. So there's a lot of there's a lot of entry going on, and the more players you have, it gets even more exciting. We've played it with three and four. With four, I haven't played with five and six, but with four, it gets even more exciting because then there's more people who are trying then, to get control. And, and then if you have six, it's just going to be so fun. I, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I got to admit, I would like to try six and see how that works. It'll it probably be, be pretty so exciting. Fun that you're going to play it so many times. That's probably true. <laughs> now. The thing, so I, I, the negotiation aspect is awesome. It's really, it, it's just exciting. The other part that makes it really interesting, which Nathan kind of hit on just a second ago, is these cards right here. There's a card that makes it to where you can make someone, they can play the thief or whatever card they just play, you can make them take it back and put it face down and their turn's over, which is, dev it can be devastating. I mean, there's powerful cards in here. There's a card that lets you 
without revealing the card, you can secretly steal treasures on one of the dragons. Secretly. And if no one catches you, you just you get to keep on doing it. So if you're really sneaky, awesome card. It there's just but there's also cards that are not that great. They're all good, but there are some that aren't as powerful. So it's kind of a gamble when you get these, but that makes it interesting because it makes it to where people may be willing to negotiate with you and let you get that red gem with your wizard so you can get a, a magical card because they're not all amazing. But it also makes people a little nervous about it because they don't know if you're going to get something that's really really good. So these cards add a whole other level. Now again, uh, you only play with these in the advanced rules. In the basic rules, you don't play with these. But in my opinion, unless you're playing with just newbies to the board game world, I would definitely recommend always playing with these. This adds a, a great, great ex bit of excitement. So overall, I'm really impressed with this game. Nathan, what would you rate it? I would rate it 30, 30, 30. 30 out of 30? 30 out of 30. <laughs> so he thinks it's amazing. Personally, I would probably give it 9 out of 10. At first, the first time I played it, I wouldn't have given it that high of a rating. Playing it a second time and with more players and, and really getting to see how these cards affect the gameplay, that took it up to 9 for me. It just, it works if you have the right group. If you don't have a group that really enjoys the negotiation and, the, and, and that kind of tug of war, maybe it won't work so well. But if you have a group of people who like negotiating and who like that interplay psychology between each other, I think this will go over really well. So for me, high recommendation. Nathan, high recommendation. Just remember, whenever you play with kids, you know, we all, we're always very fair with them. We don't try to, you know, be friendly too... Friendly too. Yeah, we try to be very friendly and not, you know, say, hey, I want all this. and no, None of that. Well, obviously, we play very nicely and friendly Unless and fairly. Unless you're all grown-ups. Yeah, but if you're all grown-ups, then you can do whatever you want, and you can be as ruthless as you want. And that's one thing I like about it. You can make it better for kids or better for adults, depending on who you're playing with. You can kind of modify your play style. So, very pleased. Glad I got this game. So, Me thank too. you, Nathan. Nathan, very much for uh, recommending it and you know want me to get it for you You're and we're, we're excited about it we're gonna be playing it probably a lot more so if you have any questions or comments you know just leave them down there I'll get back to them if whenever we get a chance uh, we yeah we really appreciate you watching this video and uh, if you want to you can subscribe to us we'd appreciate it and have a good day we appreciate it see you soon bye